All right, guys, let's tackle some chest tubes today. So the nurse is caring for a client with a chest tube. Which of the following actions are appropriate for the nurse to take when caring for the chest tube? Select all that apply. And remember, when we're tackling select all that apply, we treat each answer choice as a true and false, and we move down as we go. Option one, clamp the chest tube when transporting the patient to prevent system disconnect. Absolutely not. If there's one thing that you do not do, it's clamp the chest tube. Also, another note, you never strip the chest tube, okay? This will change the pressure in the system that could potentially cause the lung to collapse. Option two, place the chest tube collection container below the level of the patient's chest. Yes, this is true. Option three, have the tubing hang in a dependent loop. This is incorrect. Just like clamping and stripping, we do not do dependent loops. This will ultimately lead to a kink. So that is wrong. Option four, assess for normal titling in the water seal chamber. Correct. Remember, in the water seal chamber, titling represents inspiration and expiration. So you want to see that up and down movement. If you don't see that in the water seal chamber, then you're worried. And what are you going to do as a nurse when you come across a patient with no titling in the water seal chamber? You're going to check the tubing for any kinks. You're going to check insertion points, make sure that they're tightly attached. And then you're also going to check your patient. Remember, titling in the water seal chamber is them breathing in and out. So make sure that they're breathing normally, right? Also, make sure that they don't have a collapsed lung. Auscultate the lungs, okay? And option five, ensure the suction control chamber is set to the physician's orders. This is true. This number is prescribed by the physician and we keep it there until further notice if there's a prescription change. All right, follow for more.